Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the send SMS and text messages. I've got an incredible training. We're going to start from scratch on a nearly blank sheet and we're going to create a brand new campaign manager and show you how to send text messages to anyone in the world, as many people as you want on a single click of a button. I can't wait. It's going to be a fantastic training. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I've had so many requests over the years. They want this application. You want to be able to send text messages to your customers around the world, as many as you want with a click of a button. How do we do that? Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Not only am I going to show you how to create those text messages, but an application of campaign application around it so you can send multiple campaigns, you can schedule campaigns, and it can be sent to unlimited customers or it can be sent to specific types of customers customers and I'm going to show you how customers can opt out that's a tall order we have a lot to cover today it's going to be brand new record-breaking training so I want to get it all in before I do I want to make sure you understand that we have these trainings each and every Tuesday absolutely free the best way to ensure that you're going to get these free trainings each and every week is to click that subscription below and make sure you click icon the like icon and you also want to make sure that you get the notifications bell on that rung that's going to help you it's going to help our algorithms if you comment below let me know what you think of these videos i always appreciate it it's always free always each and every week and i include a free application in the download links in the description below so make sure you get that and also if you do like these applications and you do want to support our cause here i've got an incredible deal 150 of my best applications all in one zip file and I'm going to include a library where you can single click to open any application or single click to open the training video that's associated with the application. That's $56 right now, at least for this week, and that's only 37 cents a workbook. So make sure you pick that up. That's going to help us out. Let's get started. We've got so much to cover. So basically what I want to do is I've got a list of customers on this sheet here. I've got uh, the campaign that I want to build out for you here. So we got a lot to cover. Basically, I'm going to use this header row. I want to build this in front of you and show you every line of code so we're going to do that right now i've just pre-filled it with just a few little samples i want a customer list type here because we already have some customers listed and they're listed by type the reason for this is if you want to send your campaigns your sms or text message campaigns to a specific type of customer or all types you can do that and i'm going to show you just how to do that in this training it's going to be a relatively simple on the code it's not too heavy on the code this does involve a third party as of course we're sending sms messages to anybody in the world and the best way to do that is to use a third party app because they're going to take care of the setting for us and i'm going to show you just how to code for that so we can get that done and so that app is called twilio twilio i'm going to fill this in and talk a little bit because i talk a lot usually and so twilio is going to help us out with an api now i've gone over this api i've done all the hard work for you and figured out all the complexities of this so i'm going to be able to share that with you today actually i like a lighter green color let's go with a lighter green color something a little bit lighter in the mood because uh, we've done this color so much so we're gonna use fill effects here and I'll use the turquoise which is one of my favorites the POS software was on this color if you haven't seen our POS we just reached over 1 million views with the POS point of sale software uh, make sure you check that out you can search my channel for that that was a really amazing application if you haven't seen that before make sure you catch that up all right just going to give this a fade effect and it's going to be a very basic screen all i want to do is be able to see our campaigns through this okay so we're going to call this give this a title called this send i've already got send sms see how i've already got the font and text trying to trying to do some shortcuts here because these videos tend to be longer so messages that's going to be the title send text and sms messages and we're going to merge and center that just so we can get that centered over i think that's okay uh, let's just not include lk through k that'll merge it okay so send sms and text messages let me make sure i spelled that right because otherwise you're going to have to stare at a misspelling for the next hour or so okay send sms and text that looks good all right so basically we're going to have a button set up here and then i'm going to have a small form and i just want to color all these cells just like that light turquoise that's just the basic background something pretty simple so what do we want here well basically what i want is i want to have a, a button set like i said up here that's going to allow us to create new campaigns 
delete campaigns or save campaigns. I'm gonna have a list of campaigns here on the table and just a small form here. So we can start out by in D, we'll call this uh, campaign, let's see, campaign details. I'll put that in capital letters, campaign details. And I gotta keep an eye on my spelling here because otherwise, okay, so then below that I want the campaign name. Below that I want the campaign name. And then below that, I want the send on. I want to know when it's been sent. And then I want the message text. I want to keep track of the message text. So we're going to put in 160 characters. And then probably here in column G, we're going to put, I also want to know the send to. Are we going to send to all customers or just a specific set of customers? So we want send to and send at. We want a specific time that we're going to send it because we're going to be able to schedule these. So I think that's going to be really helpful. Okay, so then we're going to cover these fields. Let's just say white because these are going to be our our form fields where the user is going to be able to fill it in. And then also on this text message, I want a larger field. So we're going to merge and center that, say down to row 11. So I'm going to merge and center that, color that white also, and bring it to the upper left. Okay, so this one, I think we can merge and center this across. This is going to be our entire camp. So this is basically the form that I want to create. And then um, these also, I'm going to merge and center this one and merge and center this one, actually, and then just left justified. That's a little bit easier. Color these white. This is already a drop-down list from test. I've already set the data validation. Let's just show you that just a little bit quick. So we've got a name manager, some criteria that we can delete. That's not important because that'll be recreated. I've got one really important, uh, basically, customer type. This is a drop-down list based on this list here. It's going to include all lists and then four. That's just a little way we can jump ahead. And then I've created a data validation here. So data, data validation here is just the customer type here. That's all it is, just to save us a little bit of time. And then uh, that way we don't have these records. Okay, so basically what I want to do is just color these, give these all a green border that's within our theme. So I'm going to format those cells, go into the borders, choose a color that's in our theme, which is this dark or turquoise or dark green, run the outline and then there. And then I just want to basically uh, highlight these and do the same thing with these except this one I'm going to put a border of a dotted line on the right and then we're going to fill it in with the solid on the left the top and the bottom okay so we've got that that looks pretty good that's good enough for our form here I think it's sufficient so again we have send on let me just add the upper and lower buttons here because we want to put that in too so basically it's just a very simple form we're going to keep track of all and then I want the table down here so here is where we're going to have uh, also the table that we're going to track those campaigns so I'm going to put campaign name here I'm going to put send on here send at we need to track which campaigns that we've saved send to type what are we going to send it to all cut send to type are we going to send it to all customers or just a portion message text here and i'll probably put that in a larger field text and then maybe a send on i need to know if it's been sent so sent on and this is going to be a little bit larger field message text so i'm going to merge and center that i want to put in some details here so message details right messages have a maximum of about 160 you can actually send more than that but it'll be in multiple messages so i want to keep track of how many characters in a specific message so let's call this message characters and then i want to know let's say the message limit let's just put in limit and i'm going to put in 160 there generally that but you can send more I think up to 1600 but it would be in multiple messages and so available characters okay and let's see here so now I've got uh, this that's what I want that's pretty much what I want now let's uh, add in um, actually let's bring this down one row I'm gonna bring this down one row we need a little bit more and then I'm gonna just gonna put uh, actually so that we have a title here called we'll call this message campaigns instead message campaigns that way we can track a nice little table here so the message campaigns are going to go up here i'll merge and center that and then i'm going to hold down the control actually i want to merge and center this too so now i can hold down the control and what i want to do is i want to color all of these the same so let's give it all format those cells and we'll give it just a fade within our theme so within our theme so i'm going to fill the effects and then we'll just go to again fill effects i'll use a little bit darker color here and then to the medium 
and then hopefully you can see that it's off the screen okay that looks good that's what i want to see and a border around there too for format so that way we're consistent i'm going to drop this down it's a little bit off the screen border using the same color there's not a lot of design on this so we're going to go through the design pretty quick okay and uh so that looks good okay so now we have the and then just the border here and then that's going to be our table i've already set up some conditional formatting which i'm going to show you of course keep it simple colors are there that looks good and then i'm just going to fill this a little bit lighter than the upper one which is going to be the two lighter colors which is going to be this and this that's going to give us our fade effect which is the light turquoise okay so that looks good so basically our campaign name send on the text that we're going to apply this message and then we have our message characters here. Let's uh, format those cells. But one more, I think I'm going to put in one more table here. I just want to have some variables. This is going to be very easy. Variables. And variables are, we're just going to put two in, but you can put more in your application. I just want to show you the idea. So first name and last name. Why do we want variables? Variables are going to help us. So if we want to send, uh, in, we want to send something more personal to our customers, we can replace this, what's called first name, with the actual first name of the customer or the actual last name of the customer. So by using these variables inside a text, for example, we can do hello and then first it's something like um, and then alt enter to go to the next line if you would like to do that. Alt enter will get you there our new summer sale has just launched please join us tomorrow okay something like that so you might want to keep it short but i also want to know the limit so how many characters are in this i really want to know that so equals the length you can use length and then the text of here good so so we've got 78 so we have available characters how many available we have equals 160 minus 78 okay that way it's going to keep us you can put some conditional formatting in here okay let's just hold down the control format these cells now we have our two helpful tables i'm going to format those cells so go into the border using our same color and just use inside out okay that's going to cover it that's pretty much it so and now we have to do is add our button sets in here and let's just center this i want to merge and center this this should be merged and centered because it's a larger and then that looks good and then we're going to i've got some conditional formatting in this table already actually so if you see that isn't that nice let's just go over that with you we've been over that a few times so if you've seen my videos if not no problem you can always download this workbook for free manage the rules i've got several rules set up first one i've got a right border this right border will give a border on the right and that's only applies to column k and basically if d15 just take notice that there's no dollar sign below the uh to the left of the 15 and that is so it can apply to every single row in our applies to range so we can do that the same thing and what that's going to do is going to carry throughout i've got the same thing for the left border except this is going to apply to column d and column k right border applies to column k left border applies to column d and then i've got a dotted line in the center that's going to apply to the whole table now theoretically if this is up make sure that this dotted line are below your your right and left border so that the dotted line will not take precedence otherwise you could have to put an interior range notice how it covers the entire range you could also only cover this range too right because we're only focused on that that would work also as well so we can do that we can update that to 53 a few ways to do that right so just click apply and then we're going to get that dotted line what other rules do i have i've got the selected row i want to know what row we've selected when we select a campaign i want those campaign details to load in our table here so when we select a campaign that campaign row is going to go in b3 it's called selected row so that means whatever row we select it's going to be highlighted this color and i'll show you that in a moment and then i think we got two dotted lines probably don't need that i'll, I'll remove one after the training and then um, we've got uh, also i've got a white we're going to color this white with a border row. i also want to color the bottom row how do we do that if there is let's take a look at this rule edit this rule Okay. So basically, if the upper 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 row of any row above contains a value is not empty, and the row below is empty in column D, notice we're focused on column D. In that case, then color the bottom row. Basically, give it a border. Give it a border. And then I also want to color 
opposite rows. This one, if we add a row, this is going to be even rows. Notice the mod of 2 equals 0. It's going to color all the even rows, this lighter blue, assuming that D15 does not equal empty. This one right here, let's pull up this one right here, I believe. This one is just the opposite. This one is going to color Oh, we've been over that before, actually. This one should be format. We're going to give it the white color. That will color automatically white. And we apply that, it's going to go to white. Okay, great. So we've got that. We've got them all covered. That's it for the conditional formatting to give us our table. This training is not necessarily about that, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. But I wanted to give you a brief overview of it. Okay, so how do we do it? So how do we get that? Let's create our button sets right now. Now that we have the basic structure and we understand that we have, I'm going to create a button set. I want to be able to save, load, delete, and send campaigns. So I'm going to insert some pictures on that. I've saved some pictures here into our specific week here. I've got some pictures. Say we're going to use all of these and click insert. Okay, and then I'm just going to reset the height to 0.25 or something like that. Keep them smaller. I don't want them so big. And the first thing we've got is a logo. We're going to use this logo right here. That's going to be a nice logo here. And I'm going to duplicate that because I need to create that for another button too, but make it smaller. And then go back to 0.25 on that one as well. All right, so what do we want? I want an, a new campaign. I want a uh, delete. Actually, we don't need the cancel. Probably not the cancel in this one. I want to send. This is going to be our send. I want to delete it, and I want to save it. We're going to use this for the save. Okay, so let's create some buttons now. So I'm going to insert a shape, and I'm gonna use this rounded corner here, and I'll create a button shape, something like that. But I wanna give it the same theme as our, which is gonna be this turquoise here. I'm gonna give it that color. I think that's a applicable color for it. And let's set a size on this, probably about something like, probably a height of, that should be good. That's pretty good as it is right there. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate that. We need about four buttons, so let's, uh, two, three, four. Okay, oh, that's too many. Okay, so four buttons, but I actually I wanna move these on top, so I wanna make sure these shapes are gonna be all on top, so I'm gonna highlight those, format those, and bring to the front. That way they're gonna be on top of these buttons. And then we can unselect it. Okay, so the first thing is we wanna add a new button. Okay, so let's just call this new campaign. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna probably make that a little bit lighter. That's hard to see against that, so we can make it a little bit lighter of it like that. And then we can call it new campaigns. New campaign, okay. And then I wanna make the font a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna select the button itself and then make the font a bigger. I wanna right justify that. That looks pretty good. And uh, okay, so we'll, what we'll do is we'll bring the button a little bit smaller. All right, that's it. That's for our button. We make sure we want to center it, and then we just have to center it using that. Great, and I'm going to group it, and I'm going to call this new campaign button. Okay, and save our work. Always save our work as often as we can. You can use Dropbox for that. It's very handy. It'll save every version. Same thing for this. I'm going to, this is going to be save campaign. Now, new campaign and save campaign will not be displayed at the same time, right? Because you're either going to have a new campaign or a existing campaign. They both won't be on. So we're going to call this save campaign. Actually, it's probably just easier to to duplicate this button here. And this we're gonna call this save campaign here. Save campaign. And then there we go. Okay, so that's it. That's it all again. We're gonna apply the same, right? And then increase the font here. This font was 14, this font is 16. Let's make them both 14. Okay, and then do the same thing, center and then center. And then right, okay, good. So now we have save campaign. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to center this, hold down the control, put them both in the middle group them we're going to call this save campaign button and again i'm going to put these both on top of this actually it looks like i had a button already there notice that i'm going to delete that we had a button there with the same name from my previous test so i'm going to add that name again save campaign button okay now we've got save campaign button and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put these right on top of each other and that is because both of them are not going to be visible at the same time Okay. And then this one, we're going to call this delete. In fact, let's just go ahead and hold down the control. 
right justify both of them, put them both in the middle, make them both 14, and now we got it. Okay, so this one's gonna be called delete campaign. Delete campaign, we wanna be able to remove campaigns if we create them. Okay, so we're gonna get a training on forms a little bit, and we're going to get a great training on sending SMSs. All right, that's it, that's it. Pretty, pretty simple for the delete button, not too much there. Again, control, center, group them. We'll call this delete campaign cam button and then the last one is i want to be able to send the scheduled campaigns and that one's going to be going to put that over here i want this icon showing up here and then i want this one so we get the send look this can be smaller okay great i just want to move that one to the top because that's more important so bring to the front okay that looks good too small all right so now this one's going to be called, I'll size that, send scheduled campaigns. We'll increase the button width on that so it can accommodate all the text. Okay, that looks good. It's going to be, it's the most important button because this one's going to be sending and only sending those that are scheduled. And then this one, this thing is way too big. This little icon here, we'll drop that down to 0.15. Okay, so that's the icon that we're going to use to send it. We're going to group and center that as well. That looks good right there, so we can see both of that. Okay, holding down the control for each of the icons, grouping them, and we'll just call this send campaign button. But actually, I don't want one that's just going to send it. I want it to check to see if there's any schedule because we're going to schedule those campaigns, right? So I really just want to check to see if there's any that are scheduled because they're going to be based on the date and time. Okay, now that we have everything, what we can do is use our selection tool again, highlight all this, and make sure they're all in the centered. So we can use this one shortcut right here. Okay, now everything's centered. Now we've got our pretty much screen. This is how I want it to look. That's all I need. And one more thing on the table, I just want to put in a row. This would be one of those hidden fields. I want to keep track of the row. So I'm just going to put row here. We'll hide that eventually. All right, it looks good. That's all I want. So again, I want this to be... Uh, notice that this is highlighted green. If we change this to 16, this is going to change. We've already added that conditional formatting in because this training, we're not focused on that. I do have trainings that are specifically focused on conditional formatting, of course. I want to know the send row. That's going to be the campaign row. Let's focus on the save campaign. We're ready to write our first macro. And I'm going to call this summer sale. Okay, and we'll send to, I guess we can send in this case, we'll just do all types, but we'll show you that. And then let's give it a send on. I just want something in the past. So we'll call it January 10th. This I've already uh, formatted as a launch date. And then send out, I want a time. I've already formatted this field as a time. So let's just say 1030 uh, AM. That's fine. Okay, so we've got our campaign. We've got you. Now what I want to do is I want to click save and I want to have this to save to the first available row. We're ready to write a macro on that. I'm going to save the work. I'm going to drop this up because we, we're mostly done with the formatting portion of it. Let's get into the VBA and show just how we did that. Clicking on this campaign, I want to take all these details and save them down here. But the, what's the best way to do that? We can write six or eight lines of code to save it, or I can use data mapping for this. Why don't we use data mapping? So what do I mean by data mapping? I know this is an E4. So if I put E4 in this call in this row here, and then we hide it using changing the font colors or hiding the row, then we can map the data. E4 goes in the campaign. Send on, which is E5, goes on the send on. Send at, right, in this case, H5 would go here. So we can use data mapping, and I'll walk you through that if you haven't seen it yet. E4, E5, H5, you get the idea. Send to type would be H4. Message text, of course, that's based in E6, so E6. And then we don't, we don't need the last one because one, there's no send on field and two, VBA is going to take care of this. When we send a campaign, it's going to mark this as sent. That way it doesn't get sent again. So don't worry about this one. We're only going to map, we're only going to run our code from the first to, I believe, the, the let's say this is column. We're going to run it from column equals column four to column. What column is this? This is column equals column all the way to column Eight. So from four to eight, we're going to run a loop. And basically what I want to do in our code is whatever's in E4, put it in the first available row. Whatever's in E5, put it on this row. 
whatever's in h5 put here so that's how we're going to fill in the table so we're going to run a loop from four to eight to do just that and let me go ahead and merge and center these because we want merge actually i want to merge and less left justify them so we'll just do the first few because we're not going to focus on too many and then I'll just go in home, merge and center, and then one more time on the left justify. That's gonna get our message text. Okay, so that's what I like so far. Let's get into the developer. If you don't have your developers tab here, you can find it located in our options. And then if you look in the customized ribbon, depending upon the version you have, make sure you have developers selected here. There's a shortcut to get into the developers. It's Alt F11, that's gonna get you there. And I've got two modules, nothing in them, except some titles of some macros and send campaign. So we're gonna focus on just these two, it's very easy. We're gonna save a campaign, we're gonna add a new campaign, we're gonna load a campaign, and we're gonna delete a campaign. When I click on an existing campaign here, I want that campaign details to load here. Just a little bit of code. We're gonna write all that and show you exactly exactly how we do that first thing what I want to do is write the save campaign that's the first one we want to do it's a very easy one so how do we do that well the first thing is I've dimensioned some rows some variables here campaign row as long and campaign column as long that's pretty much all we need for the most part there'll be a few small ones so when we're saving a campaign we're gonna focus on sheet one so with sheet one we're gonna start out with just that that's that's all we need for sheet one next up we do want to check I want to make sure that e4 notice e4 is our campaign name I'm gonna make that required so if that's blank we need to let the user know that they need to fill it in so if dot range e4 equals empty then what do i want to do then message box let the user know please add a campaign name before saving that's it then exit the sub nothing we can do unless they've added that okay but assuming they have that we can then define our campaign row what is our campaign row our, the row that we're going to add it to is going to be the first available row here. So it depends on that. So the first available row, we're going to use column D because that's always going to have a field, always going to have a value. First available row is going to use end XL up. So let's write that word. Our campaign row, notice we've defined that row above, equals, and I'm going to use auto hotkey to automate that text. Notice how fast that got written. We don't need a sheet name because we've defined it with sheet one up here. We're not going to use column A. We're going to focus on column D. D. D is the one we're focused on and Excel up row. That's going to get us the last row with a value, but I want the first available row. So we're going to add one and we're going to call that the first available row. Okay, now that we have our campaign row, now we are ready to run. I just want to make sure, just in case, it's if it's less than 15, we just want to make sure that 15. So let's just write uh, one line of code to make sure to keep us from any bugs. If the campaign row is less than 15, then the campaign row equals 15. That's just going to make sure it's 15. Okay, now we're ready to run our loop. Remember, I spoke of a loop before from 4 to 8. What I'm going to do is take whatever is in cell E4 and place it here. Take whatever is in cell. So how do we write that up? Well, it's very, very easy. First, we write our loop for campaign column equals 4 to 8. Those are our columns. And we always want to close our loop, always just to make sure. So next campaign column. Now that we have our loop, what do I want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is determine the cells. We're going to use the cells, not range, because both of our column and our row are dynamic. They're in variables. Cells, what is our campaign row? We've already defined our row, so campaign row. And what's our campaign column? Campaign column, and it's going to loop dot value. What does that equal? It equals whatever is in the range right but how do we find that range it equals whatever is in e4 or e5 or e6 but how do we find that that's on row 12. so it's whatever is in row 12 in the column that's what we're going to find that range so it equals dot range and then inside that we're going to write dot cells row 12 and then in this case campaign column dot value what does that mean it kind of looks funny right this right here is our range this right here is e4 f5 or h5 or h4 though that's our range so this is going to be basically whatever's in this full range here is going to be brought down into the table into the right row into the right column so that's all we really need to do and that's going to save form data 
into tables. So we've just saved you know four or five or six columns into three lines of code. So it's really it's best when you have a large table with a lot of data. Into table below. Okay. So that's it. That's all we have to do. Now the only thing is we, we've got multiple buttons. We don't want all buttons to show up at the same time, right? And also what I also want to do is I want to set the campaign row. I want to know what the selected row is. I want to make sure that B3 contains our selected row. I want to update that. So we'll do that. Range dot range B3 dot value equals the campaign row. That's going to make sure that our campaign is now our selected selected campaign row. Okay, the next thing I want to do is just to make sure that the button sets are correct. Now we've just saved it, so we don't need the save button anymore. So we want to hide the save button. Dot shapes save campaign button dot visible equals false. And what I want to do is I want to show the existing ones. Let's just see. I need to group those. So save we're going to hide. And then what I want to do is I want to, these two buttons, new and delete, we only want to show those for existing. Existing. So how do we do that? Well, we just name those. All we can do is group these two together. This one, send, is always going to be visible. So that's fine. We'll call this existing campaign button it's fine or group either way you said let's use group group because it's a group of buttons existing campaign group okay so that's all we have to do so now we have that one so it's either or we're never going to have both of those that's why they're on top of each other because they're never both going to be shown at the same time okay so we can also write that now that it's an existing now that we've saved it we want to display that dot shapes existing campaign group dot visible equals MSO true. Okay, that's going to show existing existing campaign button set. Okay, and then we're going to again, I'll just write the note on here, hide the save one. Hide save button. Okay, great. So that's it. That's pretty much all I have to do. Let's of course save our work. We'll check our code to make sure it looks good. Save our work. Always save before you're running any code. That's good behavior. And then all I need to do is make sure that we have our save campaign, which is already selected. Right click it on here, assign the macro, and assign it to campaign save. Click OK. And it should put that right here in B15. So we're going to again save it. And then I want to make sure that our existing campaign, I'm going to move that over just so we click the save. And there we go. It saved the summer sale in row 15. Just so I wanted this is blank. It should be blank until we to go, you know, if we that looks just right. All types, 1030, everything got saved. Send on is perfect. That's exactly what I want. Okay, great. So now we have the save and notice the save button disappeared and our existing one handled. That's great. But now when I click on here, I want to do two things. I want to write two macros. When I click on here, I want to load the details here. When I click new campaign, I want all the fields to be cleared out. So let's write both of those macros right now. Okay, so campaign add new. The first thing what I want to do is clear the existing row. So with sheet one, I want to clear all the fields, I should say. What fields do we want to hear? Dot range. I want to clear B3. B3 is our selected, right? If we're on a new one, there is no selected. So we want to clear that. And it's not going to be value. It's going to be clear contents. B3, but there's more fields. What else do we want to do? I also want to make sure that it's E4 through F5, right? Let's take a look at that. E4 all the way through F5. I want to clear those fields out. Make sure that when they're merged cells, you encompass all of the cells, not just the first cell. E4 through F5. Clear those out. I also want to clear out H4 through H5. H4 through H5. Getting those cleared out is very important. We want to clear all the fields. And then the last one, the last two, E6 through H11. E6 through H11. That is our message tech. That's going to clear all those contents. Okay, and now we also want to update our button sets. Basically, it's going to be these sets, but opposite. So we want to do that too. So let's paste those, but we do need to make the updates because in this case, I want to show the save button, right? Show and hide the other one. So we're showing the save button and we're hiding the existing group. So we're going to basically just the opposite. So in this case, it's going to be C true. And in the case below, it's going to be false. 
That's gonna be the opposite of those buttons. And that's it, that's all I need to do for the campaign ad new. Okay, what about campaign load? Campaign load, now we can just click on, let's try that now. Let's Now when you notice it's a group, what I wanna do is I wanna click on the individual button and the individual icon, right click that and add that, assign the macro, campaign, in this case, add new, click okay. And again, save our work, always save your work before running new, especially when you're using clear contents. Clear the contents, that's just what I want. Just what I need to fix a little bit conditional formatting here, I noticed that. But otherwise, everything looks okay. That's it, cleared the row, everything looks good. Now all I wanna do is I wanna select on here and load the existing campaign. I wanna take all the details and bring them up to the table. Again, we can use our data mapping to do just that. So I'm gonna bring whatever's in this or whatever's in this column, I'm gonna to look to E4 and put whatever's in this column in E4. I'm gonna put whatever's in this column in E5. Put whatever, again, put it in there. Just basically the opposite of the data mapping. It helps us out a lot, so let's do that. All right, the first thing we wanna do is, of course, with sheet one, we're focused on sheet one, and then I wanna make sure that B3, B3 is going to contain our row that we've selected. If that's blank, the user can't move on. So if dot range, B3 dot value equals empty, then we need to let the user to select a proper row. Message box, please select, spell that right, please select a campaign to load. Okay, great. And then exit sub. Nothing we can do here. Exit sub. All right, so now that we know how a row, we can define it. So the campaign row of course is equal to what's in b3 so we can just copy that right in the equals and then b3 and that's the campaign row now we're ready to load all of the details so we can make sure also i do want to set the load i want to know the differences so let's also set b2 to true i want to know when it's loading so we're going to set this to true and then when it gets done we're going to set it back to false that's going to help us prevent some loops a little bit later on so dot range b2 dot value equals true set campaign load to true and we're going to do just the opposite i'm going to write another line of code and just make it false then our codes are going to go in between here so this one is going to be false and then i'm going to make it false here so as we're loading the data it's going to set this will prevent some loops so let's load our data now again we're going to do the same loop very similar for campaign column equals four to eight just like we did before except now it's going to be opposite next campaign column okay so we're going to write in the code here in this case what i want to do is write in the range and where's our range located where we want to find it this time it's located in dot cells row 12 column campaign column that is our range so this range again let's look at this range right here again this would be uh e4 e5 h5 etc so this skin range we're going to pull data i want it to go in here but i want it to come from where equals dot cells i want it to come from the campaign row campaign column because we're loading it's the opposite dot value from table to form Okay, and bring it from the table to the form. That's all we really need to do to load the data. And of course, we need to update our button sets. Our button sets are going to be exactly like this. The same as when we save a campaign. So all we need to do is copy this and then bring it down here and then just paste it right in there. That's all we need to do. That's going to set our camp buttons for the existing campaign. Okay, we're almost done with the macros on this portion of the campaign. Just wanted to get you alerted so we know what to do that again save our work and now basically what i want to do is i want to use this macro now when do i want to run this macro i want to run this macro when a user makes a selection to a row that contains a value in column d so how do we do that well again that's on the on sheet change so if we go into the campaigns and we're going to focus on the worksheet and selection change but if they make a selection on a specific that's what i want so if not i'm going to automate that text and if they make a slight change between where between basically it's going to be d15 through k and that so anywhere from don't worry about that right now anywhere from d15 all the way to k that's what i want and then we can as many rows down so how do we do it we just update this d15 through k 
and then 999. And I also want to make sure again that we're not actually loading. I don't want it to loop. So that's okay. That's nothing. And I also want to make sure that D in the target, I don't want to do, I only want to load on where D contains a value. So we need to check that. And range D and the target row, that's the row that the user selected, target row dot value does not equal empty. On those conditions, then what do I want to do? Then I want to run the macro. But I also, the first thing before I want to run the macro, I want to put whatever row they selected, I want to put it in B3. So range B3 dot value equals the target row. That's going to run the conditional formatting and it's going to let us the user know what row that we're going to be loading up. Okay, so now that we have that, we, and we can then load our campaign, just copy and paste that macro. That is it. So when we reset that code, save our work, and now we'll run and check it. Now, notice that we select on it. That's exactly what I want. Everything loaded in. Very good. Last one, all I want to do is delete the campaign, then we're going to be done. So new campaign, save campaign is also working. Save, we're going to get that message, please add a campaign. Clicking on that. I'm, one thing I don't like, I want this thing up a little bit. Notice how it's a little bit low there. I like everything on the same row. Move it up a little bit over there. All right, that should be good. That's much closer. Okay, so last thing is delete the campaign. Then we're done. Then we're going to get to the SMS. So I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. The SMS is not a lot of code. It's going to be really great. We're going to show you exactly how to set up your account. So let's get into this because I want to make sure that these are comprehensive. I want to make sure that I give you tons of value. Okay, so campaign load, delete campaign is the last one. That's what we're going to cover right now. When we delete a campaign, a very easy. First, we want to give the confirmation, making sure they want to delete it. If message box, are you sure you want to you want to delete this campaign? End quotes, comma, what type? VB yes, no, that's a yes, no question. And then we give it a title, delete campaign, close parentheses, equals VB no. If they say no, then exit sub. Okay, that's it. That way we'll get, they get a message box giving them an opportunity. Okay, so what next? Now, again, we need to make sure that we have B3. If dot range B3 value equals empty, then just exit the sub. That means there's no row. We could write a message box too, but I'll make this a little quick. Then exit sub, not row. Okay, so B3 is empty. That means we have no row to delete. So then just exit. Okay, so now we can know the campaign row is equal to B3. We didn't use with sheet one here. So we need to do that actually with sheet one. You could also write sheet one for each line too. So it's not mandatory because you could write it. And then I'm just going to bring this in here. Just drag and drop in here, that's better. Okay, so the campaign row is equal to B3. Pretty simple, equals dot B3, campaign row. Okay, and then what do I want to do if the campaign, now it's, we want to delete the entire row, so dot range, get rid of these, campaign row and quotation mark, colon, quotation mark, and campaign row, not dot value, but dot entire row, not column, row dot delete. Okay, it's gonna delete the row. All right, there we go, that's it. That's all we need to do. Then what I wanna do is I just wanna select another type. So I wanna select, basically what I wanna do is I just wanna select whatever the first one is in here if they haven't deleted it. So if D15 is not empty, then select another campaign. After they've deleted it, I want to do I want to clear it out. So if dot range D15 dot value equals empty, then dot range D15 select. Select that. That's going to automatically load whatever campaign is located in D15 dot select. Else, what do I want to do? Probably add new, right? Else, just go to the add new. So campaign add new that's going to add a new campaign based on if there's none if there are no campaigns it'll automatically add a new okay all right let's uh, create just a little test campaign and see how that working and then we can just do send on and then test i'm about to delete it so it's no okay so test here 
we can load it fine and now I'm going to delete campaign delete it's actually just one cam not campaigns it's one not a single delete campaign I'm going to right click this actually I'm going to select and hold the control right click and now assign the macro to campaign delete click OK and now let's click on this and then delete it are you sure you want to delete this yes and it's gone okay perfect and now we've loaded okay so that's it that's all we need to do now we're able to add easily campaigns great so now let's add in the sms so how do we do that okay so the basic premise of this application and the ability to send text messages is to take a specific campaign or any campaign schedule it at a specific date and time and then send it to a specific set of customers using with their phone numbers or SMS. So we have a list of customers here. And so basically these are just some fake phone numbers. I do have a real phone number for me set up for the first one. And we only want it to customers who allow us to. So if it says no, we're not gonna send it to them. Then what I wanna do as soon as it gets sent, I wanna put the last sent here. I wanna put what campaign was sent. I wanna send if the status was success or not. And I wanna just put the row in here that's obviously that's going to help us and so what we're going to do is run it through an advanced filter all of our customers basically which customers are for specific if it's not all types right if we're not sending it to everybody we only want to set it to a specific customer type we can do that by a filter and so basically what i really want to do is we're going to loop through all these customers i'm going to determine the last row we're going to run an advanced filter on the customer then what i'm going to do is i'm going to run some criteria based on the customer type if it's not all types and we want to make sure that it's going to say yes they do want us to send so based on those criteria we're going to get the results we're going to get all the results in here all the customers that we're going to be sending to going to loop through starting with the first one going to the last one we're going to send the campaign a send a specific campaign whichever campaign we are on send them the text we're going to replace whatever the first name is with their first name or their last name we're going to send it to personalized messages and then what we're going to do is we're going to mark this campaign sent once it's sent i also want to take the campaign i want to mark when the last sent the campaign sent and the status so we got all that to do we're going to run that in macros so how do we send sms as well the best way to do that especially when you're having you want global sending them to every country there's we need to use a third party there's no really way to do that without a third party tool to help us and after my research i found one of the best ways to do that is twilio twilio is a really really great uh, company and i'm going to include a link down below just click down below you can see a link to this i've got a special link set up for you there so you can get uh, actually a discount i've got it's going to give us a you a ten dollar credit so if you click there it'll give you automatic credit so include that down below and so it's really really cheap it's like one dollar for a phone number less than one cent to send sms's there is no free option it doesn't exist because it costs money to send text messages so to send text messages it's always going to but this is ex the cheapest the best and the greatest so this is a twilio this is basically your account and what you'll want to do is go in there click the link below click there get your account so you'll sign up for an account you'll either sign up or log in and then sign up and start building so it's free to sign up also you'll get automatic credit with the link i provided down below you fill in your information which i've already done and i've already created an account in fact i've created an account uh in fact i've created a test message account i have a main account and a sub account so this account you can see the information the phone number the account generally you don't want to share this but this is a test account that i can easily delete once i finish this training so it's no problem you get an authorization token you want that that's really important we're going to need to focus once you create your account you want to look for in your main account or your sub account at account SID so this is what we're going to be focused on and you want an account token these are really important now the reason you can see this I'm not blurring it out because I'll just delete this once the recording is done I can delete it so no problem same with the phone number I've also got a phone number then what you want to do is you want to get a phone number so it'll set it you'll set up billing information and you'll just actually you'll buy a phone number so it's a dollar right sorry so there is no free option so how do we do that well we can click on settings we see settings here and we have a project we can set project names we can get api keys so lots of different things we can do and we can see like in here we have programmable sms 
programmable voice. There's a lot. We even have phone numbers. Okay, so I've already purchased a phone number, and you can purchase a phone number. If you want to purchase a phone, you will need to. So all you need to do is just click active numbers. And it'll, when you want to click a n number, it'll say what country you want, and then you can click the country. And then you can click, like, let's say you want a specific, it'll start, like, if I wanted to go in the U.S., right it's always going to start with one but you would start with some specific digits and that'll search any phone numbers and then you just choose the phone number you want and you buy it you see it's just a dollar here okay so that's it for that and then it's and then that's all you need it's like 0 0.075 cents or less than one cent depending upon where you're sending it to the rates there is a list of rates you know as far as you can look it up of like how much the rates are to send to certain countries because every country is slightly different so they're not all the same Okay, so basically what you want to do is once you set up your phone number and once you have your account here in Twilio, then all the only thing you really want to focus on after that is again that account SID. This account SID is going to be important inside our code and the authorization token. So these two things are going to be important along with your phone number. And the other thing is your phone number here. So the phone number that you have is important. So I've done some tests on this and I've got a phone number all set up. So uh, let's take a look at the phone number that I have set up is the one right here So I've got this I'm not going to keep this phone number for very much longer But it's here. It's this is the phone number that I'm going to be using for this training And okay? so that's all those three things are the really Important things that you need to track from Twilio you know, to get all those things and put them in a little notepad Also, there's an API here. So basically in the API that we have here We're going to be focused on this if you want to get into the code and learn about the code You can focus on the API and it's in their document So basically all we're going to be doing again We need the information the information we need the from phone number. We have that the to phone number. We have that and then we also need our account, our SID. It always starts with AC. AC is our account SID. Let's go back in here just to show you that. In our home, I'm just going to click the home in our test just to show you that account SID starts with AC. Our account SID starts with AD. Our authorization token is a random number here. So we need those things. So once we have those things, we, we're going to set up a link. It's going to call like a guest post link so we're gonna post a link using HTTP we're gonna send specific messages the one we have from a specific number to a specific number now the from we know we just have those numbers and of course the two is gonna be based on our customer lists here so we have that that's all the information we really need to send it out so what I want to do really is I want to look through all of our campaigns I want to determine which ones are not sent and I wanted to determine which ones are gonna be sent for the current day and the current time or the time right so if there's a specific campaign that's going to be sent on the current day I need to know about that if it has not if if the time is passed of that campaign then send the campaign now but if the time is scheduled for later in the day then go ahead and schedule that time so that's how we're gonna do so the first we're just gonna write two different macros so the first macro we're gonna to write to help us understand which campaigns need to be sent and then the second macro is going to be involved in sending the campaign. So those are the two we're going to write. So let's write those two right now. So basically what I want to do is I want to look through all of these campaigns. I want to determine which ones need to be sent. We're going to use a criteria for that. So send on is going to be less than or equal today. Obviously, if the campaign's in the past, we need to send it and only in the other condition. The sent on is going to, has to be blank right equals just putting the equals here means it's going to only return campaigns that are blank so the only way as soon as i fill this in it's not going to be sent so send on has to be blank then what it's going to do is going to bring all the results up here and it's going to loop through those results and determine which campaigns need to be sent now and if it does need to be sent or sent today it's going to schedule it that's what we're going to write so let's write the first part of the macro right now i'm going to go into the send campaign macros and we'll keep this screen open here a little bit so we can see what's going on. And let's uh, let's write some code and focus on that. Again, we want to dimension some variables here because we really need to know. So we're going to dimension dimension the last campaign row as long. I need to know the last campaign. We're going to loop through those campaigns. And I also need to know the results. So the last result row as long. And if we're going to be looping through those results, we need to know which one we're on. So the result row as long that's pretty much it that's all we need as far as the dimension d so let's uh let's write some code sub I, i'm gonna actually put that inside our sub we'll focus on just one at a time sub we're gonna dimension campaign check so we're gonna check for campaigns 
and then I'm just going to drag this dimension statement inside that sub. All right, and then we're going to focus on with sheet one again, with sheet one. What do we want to do with sheet one? Well, the first thing I want to do is determine the last campaign row. If we're going to loop through all of our campaigns, I need to know the last row. In this case, of course, it's 15. There's just one, but you'll have multiple campaigns. So let's write that up. So the last campaign row, probably know by now, equals, I'm going to use a shortcut here. makes it a little quicker. D. Again, that's auto hotkey that I use to auto. That's a free software you can download from Google. This is our last campaign row, last campaign row. Okay, so now that we have our last campaign row, we just wanna double check. If, if it's less than 15, then exit the sub. That means there are no campaigns that exist. If the last campaign row is less than 15, then exit sub. Nothing we can do because there's no campaigns. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want our advanced filter. Our criteria are set. In other words, we don't have to put anything here because it's already set in a formula equals less than today or and, and of course, sent on is blank. So as long as we have those two conditions, we can set our advanced filter. So let's write that up. It's going to start out with dot range D15, which is going to be, of course, or D14, I should say, which is going to be our first data, but including the header all the way through L and the last campaign row and the last campaign row and it's not going to be dot value it's dot advanced filter and we're going to copy it to a new location and we have already criteria set up right so comma criteria range colon equals dot range and what's our criteria all right let's take a look at it our criteria including the header is going to be t2 all the way through u3 so let's write that in t2 through u3 and they're going not dot value of course so that's our criteria it's t2 through u3 and then our results where's our results going to go copy to range colon equals dot range in this case w2 we just need to include the headers all the way through let's go ahead and scroll over there so we can get the entire results in here all the way through ae2 so that's it ae2 okay we'll write that up ae2 so that's where our results are going to go and we also want unique would be equal true is fine you know oh, we'll just put false because you might have very similar campaigns unique colon equals false okay so that's our let's put in the quotations a e2 that's better okay so now we have that and now what's next um now that we have we got to check for the results so let's set the results last result row is going to be equal to dot range and we're going to use w in this case w 999 and then dot end excel up dot row that's our last result row if our last result row is less than three less than three then go then exit sub that means there's just no no results so we don't need to even move further okay so now we can ready for run our loop for the result row we've already defined that is equal to three to the last to the last result row to last result row okay next result row always close our loops so we have our loop so what are we going to do the first thing what i want to do is i want to check to make sure that to see if x which is our send on is that date less than less than or equals the date or the or actually less than is that date less than the current date if it is we need to send it now so let's do that let's write up that is the current send on and the send on is it less than the current time if it is send that now if dot range x and the result row plus plus y right plus y plus the send on plus the send at is going to be equal i want to check if it's current if it's less than the current time plus and we can just copy this and then just change it to y plus y 
Is it less than now? Is it less than the current time? If it is, then we need to send the campaign right now. It's already passed due, so that's not good. Then what do we want to do? Send that campaign right now. I'm going to write a macro, and that map is going to be a separate macro that sends a campaign, but we'll write it send. Okay, I'll just call it campaign send. That's the macro that we haven't written yet, but we're going to write it. Else, else then we need to schedule it. How do we do that? Well, that's pretty easy. We just need to do this application dot on time and what is the time that we want to schedule it what is the time and date again it's this in this case I want to just send it right out this date and this time on time this date this date and this time send it and what do I want to send I want to send the same macro but on a specific time so campaign send but in this case it's going to schedule it at that specific time that's it that's all I need to do so again if it's less than the current date, if the current date is greater than the campaign send date and campaign send, then send it right away. Otherwise, schedule it for for this specific date and this this will generally be the current date and this specific time. That's it. That's all we need to do. So very, very easy. Now we have that separate macro that's going to run and it's going to automatically check for new campaigns. OK, so we're done with that macro. Now all we need to do is write the macro that's actually going to send our campaign. It's going to send it. So let's write that now. Again, we know the name of it. It's going to be this this one name right here because we've already written it. Sub and campaign. OK. Let's do that. Now, this one we're going to focus mostly on sheet two, right? But we have to dimension a lot of variables here. I'll scroll this up a little bit. So, again, we're going to be mostly focused on this customers, although we will pull the campaign information from here. All right, we're going to write those variables now. Actually, there's one more thing I wanted to do. When we have a specific result here, we know we're going to send it. What I want to do is I really want to make sure that we're going to send this specific campaign. I want to know what campaign this is. This campaign's in row 15. So what I want to do is I want to put that send row, that send campaign row, right in B4 so that I know when I run that campaign, I know exactly which campaign to pull all the information in. So let's write that now. B4 is going to be equal to what? We want to put B4 equal to whatever is in AE and then the whatever the selector row. So let's write just that little part right now and I'm going to put it in right here just dot range B4 is equal to dot range A E and the result row and the result row that way it's going to put campaign I'm just gonna write then campaign row to send so when we run the campaign we know to look into B4 once I know what B4 is, once I know what's there, I know what, what the campaign name is, I know when to send on, I know what the message text, I know everything to send. So that's gonna be really helpful. So now we can write in, let's start dimensioning our variables. Okay, so what dimensions do we need? We need to dimension the campaign row as long, the last customer row as long. Also, I need to know the last result row as long and of course the results so we can loop through though the result row as long and then the customer row we need to know what customer we're on customer row as long and then the send count I want to know how many we're sending send count as long I want to keep track of all of those so what else I want to now we have some string variables we need to track so to mention the send text as a string first name as a string of course last name as a string last name as a string got to have that information and then the also i want to do the send to send to as a string and send from those are the phone numbers those are going to be strings send from as string and then the send body we're going to need to send that information over so we need to do the send body as string and the URL is a string. That's URL that we're going to be sending as a string. That's it except for the object. One object we're going to be the dimension a uh, object HTTP. That's going to be the call that we're going to be sending the post as an object. Okay. All right. So what do we need to do? We're going to be focused primarily on sheet two because that's where our customers are with sheet two. So we're going to put the focus there. But there's a few things we need to do get from sheet one. 
if right we're going to send a campaign and that campaign is going to load is going to be okay, located here so if b4 is empty there's nothing we can do we don't have a campaign so if dot range we'll actually we have to do sheet one because we're focused sheet one dot range b4 dot value equals empty then exit sub nothing we can do if we don't have a campaign row so again the campaign row now we can set of course what is in sheet one b4 so we can copy this and then put that to equal b4 okay so now that we've marked that as the campaign row now we have the campaign row that's going to really help us and we want to put the send from send from is equal to now do you remember that send from let's take a look at that that send from is located in my information this is the number that's been provided to us so let's look at that and that is right here let's pull that up in our phone numbers and we need to pull that up so make sure when you're doing that you pull your phone number up that you have there so my send from is going to be here send from number this was a test i did send from 489 so no spaces so make sure when we copy that in our code this is what is our send from number get rid of it but include the plus send from get rid of the spaces that's the number i want to use 4889 okay and make sure you end quote okay remember the plus is important but the but the quotation so we need that what else do i need now what i want to do is i need to run a check so i want to look i need to set the criteria so what I need to do is I need to set the criteria right here and, and if it's all types, this can be blank. But if it's not all types, we need to set a specific for a specific customer. OK, so let's do that now. Let's just check. So we have our campaign row. So we're going to look at if G and the campaign row is all types, then mark this blank. Otherwise, put in whatever the criteria is here. So let's just do that right now in that in the code. If we got to specify sheet one because we're focused sheet one dot range g and the campaign row dot value equals all types quotation all types then dot range n3 dot value equals whatever is in this row otherwise clear it out equals whatever's here else basically we're going to clear out n3 we're going to clear this out there's nothing no criteria so we can clear it out else n3 dot clear contents okay it's going to clear the criteria it's going to put in that criteria the okay to send this is always going to be yes because anybody that has a yes in this case we just have one that's going to stay here so our criteria when we run our advanced filter is going to be n2 through o3 okay so let's continue on in order to run our criteria, we need to get the last customer row. So the last customer row is equal to dot range A. Remember our customers are in A. Nine nine. This is fine. This is going to get us our last customer row. Okay. Once we have our last customer row, we're ready to run our advanced filter based in sheet two. Again, it's going to start out at A two all the way through I in the last row, and then our criteria here, and then our results are going to go right in here. Okay so let's do that right now i do have a phone number here it's just hidden okay because otherwise everybody's going to call me up tomorrow so there is a phone number here it's just hidden um if i don't delete it before sending you this workbook i'm going to get a lot of calls but i love you guys don't worry i love your calls okay so the last of the criteria range now we've got that set so ready to run our advanced filter so dot range a two right all the way through i and the last customer row last don't forget the and sign randy and the last customer row dot advanced filter and then we're going to copy it copy to another location so excel copy to another location criteria range colon equals what's our criteria range dot range you know that already n2 through o3 we were just n2 through o3 we were just over that not dot value that just comes up automatically okay so we've got that our criteria now we're ready to place our results and where do we want our results we're going to copy to range colon equals dot range let's take a look at that so we can go over together it's going to be q2 all the way through y2 that's where our results are going to go so let's put that inside the code q2 through y2 
That is our results. Then all we need to do is set unique equals true. Okay, so we'll set the unique to equal to true. All right, let's just take a look at that, double check that. Dot range A2 in the last custom row advanced filter, we're gonna copy it, criteria range equal to dot range N2 through O3, copy to range Q2 through I3, unique equals true. That looks right, and of course now, once we run our advanced filter, we've got to get the results row, we gotta know what our results row, and we gotta measure that, so the last results row we gotta set, so the last result, row is equal to we can use q dot range q and then nine 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 q nine 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 dot end dot end excel up dot row okay the last result row and again we always want to check to see if there are no results if the last result row is less than three then there's no results less than three then exit sub Okay, because there are no results, so nothing we can do. Okay, but assuming that there are results row, now we can start our loop. So the for result, we need to loop through every single customer for result row, we've already defined result row, equals three to the last result row. Okay, that's gonna make sure we close our loop, next result row, and then we can write our code inside. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we wanna do is we need to know Basically, as we're looping through, we're going to start out in three, going to the last one. And I need to know what the original customer row is. In this case, it's three, right? This is where I'm coming from, three. So we need to know that. So how can we do that? We just pull it up from Y. Y and the result row is going to equal the customer row. Because I need to get customer information. So customer row is equal to dot range Y and the result row and the result row gonna be another long training we're almost done we're, only, we're gonna be done in a few minutes so not to worry we're nearly there okay but you know my trainings aren't 10 minutes by now so that's cool customer row is gonna be cool that's our customer row customer row we need to get the information first name last name and all phone numbers so we've got to loop through that and we got to know what row first name where's our first name is going to come from and of course we can get it from we can get it from two places we can get it from our original data or we can get it from here we'll just get it from here q and three so we can write that in equals dot range q and result row dot value so that's it q and that's going to be our first name and we, of course, we want to get our last name just in case we're going to use our last name inside the text messages, which we can. So we're going to copy and paste that and then just update to the last name. And that's located in R, of course, R. And then we'll update that to last name in the memo here. Okay, so now we've defined the customer row. We've got the first name and we've got the last name. We also, of course, need to know with a phone number. And that's going to be in our send to string variable. Send to where is that going to be equal to let's uh, just clear this out send to is located in t right t's are where our phone number is so we're going to put the send to t and we'll call that the phone number obviously phone number make sure it's not formatted right it should include any anything else so we want to make sure that it only includes the information that you have okay and after the send to then what we need to do is that we need this send text send text now what are we going to send we're going to send a few things we need to do some things i want to send what's basically here right here how do we know we know it's in column h but how do we know we know the send rows in b4 so we've already so we're going to get this but what i want to do is i want to take basically this information and every time i see first i want to replace it with their first name or every time i see last like it is with the pound last pound or pound first pound i want to replace that with the actual first name so how can we do that we can use dual replace statement so the send text is going to be equal to replace replace because we're using it to twice and what is the original the original text it's sheet one dot range h and we know the campaign row we've already defined it above campaign remember we've defined it right here we know the campaign row because it's right here so the campaign row dot value so that is the original text of course that's comes with all the variables we need to replace those with the actual name so comma what are we going to replace it what are we looking for first thing i'm going to look for is first 
Um, so I'm looking for that. And what am I going to replace it with? I'm going to replace it with first name, our variable that we've added, first name. Okay, what about the second one? The second time I'm going to look for, in this case, pound last pound. Make sure you got the quotation marks coming. What am I going to replace that with? That's going to be the last name of the variable. That's it. So that's their syntax. Now we need to include that in the loop because it's going to change every time. So that's it. That's all we need. Now we've got the syntax already sent. And what about now? Let's just build out the body. The body is what we're going to send. The body should include the send to number, it should include the message, and it should include the from. It's going to include all that. So let's build out that. That's the body of what we're going to actually send to Twilio. So uh, send body, we've already defined that as text up here. Let me just double check to make sure we have that correctly. Send body, this is what we're focused on. Send body equals. And now we get it. We have a specific format that we want to send out. So equals two equals quotation marks and the send to. And what else? Now we get to focus on the from quotation marks. And we also need the and marks. We need to separate those inside our body. And from equals again in this case and the send from. In fact, our our numbers don't include the plus so I'm going to add a plus right here too but our from does notice our from has it already so I'm going to add in right right here the plus just to make sure I should send out automatically anyways but just in case so send to I'm adding it on the two but the from already has it send from so this is going to send the send from number now what else do we want send from and quotation marks again and this time we're going to focus on the body and body equals what is the body equals and of course our send text right we want to send text that's going to, the information send text is the actual message that we're sending okay so that's it that combines all those strings we have the to number we have the front number we have the send from in the body everything's already set so great now we are ready to write our code in fact i'm going to copy and paste a little bit of this because it's going to be very very technical and uh, it's uh, not going to help you if i type everything out exactly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, then I'm going to explain everything exactly. Not everything, just a few lines of code. So then I, it's, it's easier and faster and I make less mistakes. Okay, so let's explain. I just copied in these four lines. That's all I did because they're very technical and I don't want to get one character wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the object. We've defined that as an object. We're going to create an MSXML server. This is basically a request to the HTTP. We need to make the request. Basically, what we're requesting is we're going to send it to the Twilio API. We're sending something to this API right here. We're making this request to send it. Basically, we need to send them this link here, this post. We're going to create a post link. We're going to send them this where our accounts, we need to send them our account user ID and messages. And then what we need to send them is the body, the from, the two. We've already taken care of this. Then what we need to do is we need to send them the two other things. Our, again, the same account ID. And then we need to send them our authorization token, which we have both. Okay, so that's with the format that we're going to be following. And let me show you inside the code. So the URL is the same one that they've suggested. This, the accounts, my, your specific, remember, when you have your account number, I'm going to include this blank. This account number here, remember here, this specific account number is the one that you are going to get right inside. Let me pull that up again just so you can remember here. It's going to pull it up right in, uh, let's go into the home right here this account SID that's the one you want to copy okay we need this two places two places you're gonna put it inside the code you're gonna put it right here and you're gonna put it right here okay so two places put it those two locations once you have it okay so then we've created this full link everything everything should stay the same except for this remember this is your own account this, mine you can't use mine because i'm going to delete it after this training so it won't help you okay so once you have that then just write a post we're going to open we're posting to it we're going to include that url that url has been defined right above false whatever that means i have no idea to be honest with you i don't okay so then <laughs> at least i'm honest okay then again your account number and your secret id secret id is here okay so that's it that's pretty much it then we're going to send in a record request content type header this is the actually just a type of unicode url unicode 
then we're going to send the entire body. Now, if we want to get, we want to know what we get back, we're going to get the results back. So the results would be something like response text. So object HTTP dot response. So once we send it, we get a response, response text, something like that. So this is the response text that we will get back when we make this request. But I want to take this and I want to basically see what's inside it. And if it says something like Cade, then I know it's been sent properly, right? The response that we're going to get is going to include, it's going to include a lot of text, but it's going to include this text called Cade. So what I want to do is I want to check for that. So we can write a code if in string this object http dot response text comma if it includes the word cade let me write that q u e u e d cade if it includes that then i know it's been sent, sent successfully so if that does not equal zero it means that that word is included that means it's been sent or it's been cade and then it'll be sent then what i do i want to write something i want to know that i want to set the send status so how do we do that the first thing I want to do is dot range. I want to put inside the customer that this has been sent successfully. So how do we do that? Well, back into the customers, we know the customer row, and I want to put the word success right here into H so that we've been that. So let's just do that right now. H and the customer row dot value equals success. Else and then I also oh, I also want to run the send count. I know it's been sent properly, so send count equals send count plus one. Okay, so we want to count it else it has it's failed. So sad, but it failed. So let's just change this and write that it failed. Copy and then failed like a failure. Not you, the text failed your success because you're watching this video okay great now we've got now we're not going to run a count because we only run this count for successful okay so now that we have that already now we just want to add a few more details we're ready to go so i also want to update a few more things i also want to know what campaign was sent and i want to know when it was last sent so let's add in f and g for that specific customer before we move on to the next customer so we can do that with this lines of code so we can just copy this here and then just update the column so in this case g f is f is going to be last sent so equals now that's going to now that's going to set current time and date that it was sent even though all right sent and then also in g i want to put that the campaign what campaign was sent i want to know what campaign was sent where are we going to find that well that's in the campaign row it's d in the campaign row so we can send that with this line of code so equals sheet one focus on sheet one dot range d and the campaign row dot value campaign name so that's going to know the campaign name that got sent that's it so that's it that's all we need to do to loop through that right so we just loop through that each one now once we've looped through all the i want to do one more thing i want to update this campaign i want to update here i want to know that it's been sent so k and the campaign row should be also the current date so let's just type that out right now sheet one dot range k and the campaign row dot value equals date set current date of campaign sent okay that way it's not going to keep looping through because it's been sent and sent and sent and then i want a little bit of alert message box this campaign was sent successfully to how many people and send count and space customers so that way we're going to know how many it was sent to the campaign okay let's save our work we're just about done all right excellent so now what we have to do is just set this assign this macro to the campaign check because i want to check it okay we know this hasn't been sent and we know that january 10th is earlier than this so we'll check we'll fix any bugs that might exist let's take a look at that sent on okay not send on all right let's retry that 
Okay, that's good. One last name. We double that. That well, obviously we don't need that. That's not going to help us. Variable got doubled. Okay, and after assigning this macro, let's take a look here. You know, we got to do just one more thing. We need to put the row in here because when I bring this row over here, I need to let's bring shrink this up. I need to put that row right here. So we need to when we save a campaign, I need to make sure that that row equals row must get put into the code we need to know that this is row 15 so let's make sure to put that in the code under the save because that's an important part so into the campaign macros and then also the last thing when we're saving it here up here we just need to put in that one after the loop dot range and in this case it would be column l right that's the one we're going to put in equals the row we'll just put in a formula that way if we delete one l and campaign row dot value equals and then the formula equals row so this way it's going to always maintain the row and the reason that this is important is because that row is going to come back up here and put it in right here ae and then this row is going to go back into the send row okay great let's take a look at the code here and uh looks good we've got the variables coming this should be if campaign all types then n3 this should be does not equal all types that's not correct so if it's does not equal all types then we need to match it otherwise clear it out okay that looks good now let's uh right click here assign the macro campaign check now we can run the macro here okay great let's click send scheduled campaigns and see what happens the campaign was sent to one customer successfully now i have my phone number attached to my skype so let's take a look inside my skype because i've got a phone number sent on skype here it is and let's take a look at this here and it says let's scroll down here it says hello randy our new summer sale just launched please join us tomorrow perfect coming from our phone number 310 so now now the only reason this came to my skype is so i can show you easily this can go to any single phone number that i've got this tied any single phone number in the world great and let's take a look the campaign was now sent we have one customer perfect and look at our customer we know this is just cleared out that's all it is perfect that's exactly what i want make sure that our got updated look our summer sale was sent at 628 summer sale was sent it was success in a row awesome okay thank you so much for joining me on this extended training i really appreciate it i've just shown you how you can take excel and create unlimited text messages to send them to all your customers in just a few clicks of the button if you like this training make sure you subscribe and go ahead and pick up that 150 workbook package it's just 56 dollars. that would really help us out thanks so much and we'll see you next week have a great one